How how's lockdown been for you, Jamie? Um, I would say um, I've had I've had a great deal of anxiety about the world and the planet and the health of our of our <laughs> of our species. Um, and uh, it made some great changes to my working life. Uh, but I'm in the very lucky position of um, having a family full of people I love that I live with already. So I have two young children. I have uh, my wife. And so to be together, um, to be paused in this way, it's been it's been actually really that part's been really amazing. Um, and I think once I start stop checking the news every hour, things got a lot uh, things got a lot <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> things got a lot easier yeah and we've been navigating things like homeschool and then trying to get work done in the afternoon and kind of jumping around and sharing things and it's it's been i think there's been some uh, there'll be some things i'll really take uh from this once you know once the kind of dust has settled but uh, yeah it's been it's been a strange time but there's been some silver linings to it as well it's funny you say pause because that's how i think of it even the weather's kind of paused you know there's not much of it around and it's it's not do you, how much do you, do you think it is a pause and we'll get back to normal? And how much do you think we will come out all changed permanently after this? Well, I saw a lot of people talking on social media right at the beginning of this um, about how, you know, this was a, a wake up call for everyone in the world. And I, I thought it was a bit too premature that because people are dying and people are very sick and people are losing their jobs and, um, you know, we're going to go into a great recession. But I think obviously, as with everything, um, as with everything negative, a positive can always come out of it. So I think, you know, I can only talk about my own experience. And, you know, it's been it's been a long time since I haven't been on a plane um, once a week. You know, I, I wouldn't spe say I spend a ridiculous amount of time away from my family because I've always tried not to do that because I want to be a parent. Um, I want to be a parent to my kids. But actually to not have anything in the diary at uh, first yeah. moment was terrifying yeah. and then actually it allowed me to just go okay right let's think about this differently how i can use my creative creativity still um but from home and not getting on a plane and not going to play a show and that's it's a strange feeling but again you know it has made me think about what my future life will look like and i certainly hope to go back to playing gigs but it has shown me that being at home and not playing gigs, there are other ways to make uh, to make my life work. So there are, I guess, at least three strands to what you do. There's the writing and then there's the recording and then there's the performing. And I can see that writing is something that that can be and, and is done in isolation. So it, it, how, how has your writing been affected by this? <laughs> This, this is another uh, interesting thing that seemed to uh, occur right at the top of this. There are a lot of creative creative people, artists saying, and now's the time to dig into this and, and you know, use all this energy and kind of throw it into your creativity. And actually, you know, everyone was kind of jumping online and doing their thing. And I was really amazed, you know, people really kind of rallied around and got stuff going straight away. And actually, my first thought was not to, to get behind the piano and start making music, actually. I just felt a bit too anxious and strange and actually mm. I just wanted to look after my family and be make the time as precious as possible uh, and, and use it in that way. So actually I really stepped away for a little bit. I didn't jump straight towards the, uh, the piano to write, but actually through letting everything lie fallow for a bit, things started to, to come and actually, you know, I'm used to taking kind of whole days while the kids were at school to sit in this studio here and just come up with ideas. And of course, I don't have that right now because they're home all the time and we're doing school with them most of, you know, half of the day. And then there's a bit of time in the afternoon, but my wife tries to work and they're always going to need something. So I've been snatching shorter amounts of time and uh, but also allowing my my brain and my creative brain to to be a little quieter. Things have come in a a really uh, positive and strong way. So you think the music that you might make off the back of this will be affected by it, but it won't just be songs about I'm so lonely and I miss my my friends and family and I want to go down the pub. I, uh, I've i never found that I'm such a kind of direct, direct diary writer like that. Um, um, I like... I like things to kind of sink in a little bit. I love writing stuff down as it happens, but they tend to end up um, in songs when they've had some some hindsight. So I've got the the record of the immediate feelings, but also hopefully you can uh, impart some of the wisdom that's standing back from things uh, in, in due course. So 
Um, I imagine there will be plenty of songs about exactly what this feels like, but, uh, you know, hopefully, um, I think it's more, you know, I go back to the idea of this being a pause. You know, I, I did read somewhere, I can't remember where it was, referring to this time as the Great Pause, you know, kind of play mm. on the Great War. Mm. And um, I do think a lot of the time creativity is born out of boredom. Um, uh, you know, allowing your, your, you know, not standing in a queue with your phone checking social media, but actually standing in a queue being bored, allowing your children to be you know, to experience boredom and not think of it as a negative thing, because actually it's uh, it really um, it's like um, kind of fertilizer for the mind, I think. So um, I don't know what will be produced out of this from my kind of creative output, you know, what it will reflect. But I certainly know it will be the result of a mind that wasn't running from one place to another, just trying to fit everything mm. in. I struggle with that where you say about uh letting kids be bored i i'm the kind of dad who wants to make sure they're always engaged if they look bored then i'm i'm trying to give them things to do and i i know that that's not necessarily the right thing to do but that's that's there's I no know. right or wrong way there is there's no right or wrong way no um, I, I just i know that through through being a bit bored i started picking away at things on the piano and yeah. um you know listening to music and getting into the lot of things i got into now so mm. but it's easier said than done you know because there's, there's so much more to engage children with these days that you do want them to kind of feel uh you know that th all these opportunities and the, uh, things that are available to them just by kind of clicking onto a computer so i'm sure mm. there's a happy medium but uh, no one has the parenting <laughs> answer have you found it i haven't found it is that is 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 love them and be reasonably consistent and i think yeah. you're probably doing a good enough job um bless you <laughs> Let's talk about the performance side, because surely most musicians thrive from the live performance and the feedback they get from the artist, the feedback they get from the audience is at the moment they can't do that in the same way. What's your what's your feeling about the performances that you have seen online and, and the ones that, that you've done? Yeah, I mean, there's been some amazing things. Uh, it's so interesting the way people um, people go about it, you know. Uh, I think there are kind of, there are some really, there are three examples I can think of. There are the ones where people have just literally turned on their phone or their computer or their tablet or whatever and just kind of filmed themselves kind of playing the guitar in the bathroom and playing a few songs and, and chatting to people and doing that every night. You've had, um, you know, someone like Gary Barlow who's thought it through really carefully and has a different collaborator every every night and puts it together and makes it this kind of event every night. Um, and you've got what Erica Badu is doing, which I don't know whether you've seen, but she's actually charging for hers and making it like a full production. Right. Um, and, you know, her argument is that, yeah, you know, I know, you know, I'm not about to go bankrupt, but I have a crew of people and uh, by bringing them all together and making a bit of money out of this, we can keep things going. And she's done some incredibly experimental stuff. And I saw her interviewed and she said, I didn't know how to do any of this before uh, this pandemic. And now I've worked out how to do all this streaming stuff and all this, you know, pay-per-view stuff. So, um i've been really i've been impressed by i've been impressed by some people's creativity you know really to kind of jump in and you know the live stuff i've done um i tried to think about it carefully i tried to compose it well um i, I mean i totally made up the the music part that part I, I knew but in terms of filming it i tried to light it i tried to use a decent camera and i've, I've done mm. some filming of some tracks as well and again i've i've been reminding myself how to use final cut pro and <laughs> these kind of things and you know mix sound a bit better and how to light things a little bit. So I think you can develop new skills within this as well, just out of pure necessity. Um, I think there's no substitute for the real thing though. You know, that that's, of course there's no substitute for a real gig, but I think it's wonderful for artists to stay connected to the people that love their music um, just by kind of checking in, playing a few songs, mm. um, not trying I to mean, change. I guess in some senses it's, you know, the, the music is the publicity for the artist. Um, and so, you know, staying connected, like you say, is is definitely necessary, you know, because when artists go away for a few years, the danger is that people forget about them. Yeah, sure. I mean, I <laughs> I've tried to train myself out of that thought <laughs> because I was I was told that from day one when I became successful at 23 and said, you know, if you don't if you don't keep going, you know, people will forget about you. People yeah. have short memories and. I believed that for a long time. And I think obviously there is that to some degree, but I think there's also a, a great argument to uh, just allow yourself to be in the world because actually you've got to decide on what the most important thing is. And 
You know, I think if you're putting out stuff that you believe to be of some quality, then it shouldn't just exist in the immediate moment anyway. Um, you know, it should exist in, into people's consciousness for, for, for a long time to come. And, I, you know, I have... I have the grandiose um, hopes that that sometimes if, if I make a song and it feels like feels powerful to me that it might feel powerful to someone else for a long time to come. So I think it's okay to step away for a little bit. Mm. Um, and but at the same time, I think these live, these Instagram lives, Facebook lives, YouTube live things, all these kind of things. I think again, if if people if it's approached with some authenticity, then. Um, it's going to speak, you know, if, if it seems like, oh my God, people are going to forget about me. So I better do, you know, 20 of these in a month, then it will seem throwaway. Um, mm. But, you know, you watch what Eric is doing. You watch what, Ga Ga I mean, Gary Barlow is one of them. He's so on it in terms of like promotion and, um, uh, you know, keeping himself in the limelight. But he's also incredibly talented and, mm. he's, and, he's, and he's intelligent. Yeah. He just can't help himself really, can he? He's, he he, he oozes. what he does. He oozes genius, really, you know, in production as much as in the, the writing of the music, I think. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, because we're doing this, this piece on uh, gigs, I wanted to ask you a couple of uh, maybe straightforward questions. So first of all, are gigs dead? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, they are right now. Um, but I, I think if there's one thing the music industry has really proved in the last few years is that the live experience is kind of is unrivaled. You can see that with the growth of the concert industry. And, you know, a lot of people have opinions about, um, you know, ticketing and pricing and all those kind of things, but people want to go out and see shows. I know I do, you know, and I play them too, but I also want to go and see shows. It's, um, it's, uh, it's where the music people get their sense of community, you know? Mm. Um, and I think you meet your tribe when you go and see a band that you love. And I think these things are more important than ever. You can find your tribe on the internet, but there's nothing, nothing beats meeting your tribe in real life. And, you know, if you go to a Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds concert, <laughs> and, you know, you look at the 10,000 people there and you go, God, all these people love these lyrics and this yeah. music the same way I do. And everyone looks different, different ages, all that kind of stuff. Um, but nonetheless, you're like, OK, these are these are these are some of my people, you know. Yeah. Um, so, no, I don't I don't think they're dead. I think it's going to be complicated. Um, as with all of this, um, but I think um, when the opportunity arises again, people will jump at the chance to see live music again. So one of the things we're talking about is this idea that there, there are these community events online, whether it's in Minecraft or Fortnite, or whether it's a slightly more traditional place where people, the fans can go online to watch an artist perform. Um, how do you feel about that idea of, of performing inside a virtual world? I love this idea. Um, so I'm a I'm a I'm a big computer game fan. Um, so you know I've I've actually in recent years as computer games have got more advanced. You know I'm I'm not a I'm not an online player so much, but I love the big open world games like Grand Theft Auto, uh, The Last of Us, uh, Red Dead Redemption. They really thought very very hard about their soundtracks. I've actually discovered music through. The radio stations are driving around a stolen car and Grand Theft Auto, <laughs> yeah. and actually, I would, uh, I would, I would be first in in line if they had opened up a jazz club in Grand Theft Auto and and I could play in it or any type of concert. And I know that the it was Travis Scott who did the concert in Fortnite, right? Um, I just think it's a brilliant idea, and um, again, not a substitute for the real thing, but I think people are hanging out online, so why not why not be creative with it? And I, I think that was a that was a brilliant brilliant idea and. Um, it made me want to play Fortnite. <laughs> so, I mean, in many genres, obviously jazz, the live performance is so crucial. What's the future in the short term? Do you think you you would be doing more online stuff because you can't get people into a, a club or a theatre? I, I think, um, you know, I sh in some ways I should always be doing more online stuff anyway, because I think it's a great way to en engage with your fans. You know, I try and do as much as I can in the sense that I'm a I'm a family man. You know, I have a I have a I have a job which doesn't always allow me to kind of work out how to do stuff on the Internet. And, um, you know, I also want to just kind of rest my rest my brain for a bit. But, mm. you know, if there's I would certainly take from this time when, you know, we're all kind of back out there again to some degree and whatever that may look like. I will try and tend more to my online world because I think it's uh, it's a great way to maintain a connection 
with your fans mm-hmm. and to express your ideas and to experiment. And again, I look at what Erica Badu has done in this time, these quarantine concerts. And, you know, she ain't just sticking a, her laptop on top of her piano or in a bathroom and playing to it. And, you know, no problem with doing that. But she's done these like trippy. I've seen every one of them. I paid for all of them. She's done these trippy uh, experiment. It's a t- it's a place where people can experiment. You don't have to mm. sit there and play your hits. You can try something brand new, you know, and um, these tools are all there for us to use. And, um, you know, creativity just sucks up these tools and, um, you know, creativity breeds more creativity. And, you know, ultimately, if you're an artist, all you want is to perpetuate the feeling of creation and get better at it. And these tools help you do that, I think. So on the subject of what you said about Erica, she's she's charging for the concerts. I wondered how the the finances work for many musicians because I, I've heard that record sales you can't live necessarily on record sales these days. They're a loss leader for the kind of to sell the concert tickets, for example. If the concerts at the moment are free, can many musicians survive financially? Do you think what what, what else is there to make money from apart from selling tickets? No, I think it's going to be very hard for a lot of um, for a lot of musicians. Um, you know, I uh, yeah, I had a tour uh, that was uh, that was cancelled. Um, uh, no, sorry, postponed because it is actually happening. We postponed mm-hmm. the dates for obviously a long way to come. But um, it's um, I think a lot of people are going to be in real trouble um, because you know concerts are live concerts are what keep ninety percent of musicians going. You know, not everyone has catalog that is is streaming um and is able to you know sustain them and 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 keep money coming in and i think it it is it is tricky you know some people make their money exclusively through playing live and i think obviously those people are really going to suffer of course there's just 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 no no way but i mean everyone's everyone's going to suffer um Mm. everyone's going to suffer in this I, i don't i don't really have any I don't really have any sensible, helpful answers with that. I just, mm. I know, of course, the obvious answer to that is yes, many musicians are going to are gonna really, really struggle. Uh, you know, I think about the amount of musicians I know who play in the West End, you know, play in theatres, who's, you know, that's their, that's their job. Um, and so obviously that will, that, that, you know, they'll be paid under the kind yeah. of furlough scheme, but still it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very, very odd situation, but it yeah. is for humanity, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, you're a big tech guy, which you know maybe maybe is slightly counterintuitive given the genre of music that you come from. But you you've been on the Rolly keyboard, which is something that we had on the show a few years ago. You you did a five G music hookup where you were able to play in sync with other musicians, weren't you? Was that real? Were you, was it that good that you could play in time with other musicians remotely? Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, it's really, really clever technology. And I think, um, you know, again, one of the things I, I, I think that will be taken from this is that so many things are possible. It's possible to get together with your band and rehearse and discuss recordings. And, you know, we did a demo for a new song of mine the other day. Everyone, would, I just sent the track around my band and they all recorded at home. And it, man, it sounds good, you know. <laughs> a lot of these things can be done in different ways uh, to a lesser cost to everyone, a lesser cost to the environment, and all sorts of things. So these are the kind of things I hope that are, are um, you know, that w- we we can take from this. But um, you know, that five G thing was really was really fun, and I think we're all we're all seeing. I think we're all seeing how useful this technology can actually be, rather than just saying it's kind of ruining our brains and <laughs> turning us into robots. Yeah. No. Don't. Yeah. Just don't don't listen to that. Uh- <laughs> We get that every week in our Twitter feed. Um, gosh. Um, so here's a question that was obviously written by me and not by Jonathan Coates, the producer, who knows a lot more about music than me. Um, different music genres have different roots. So jazz was born out of the Civil War. Rock and roll came out of World War II. Disco came out of dance music, the underground dance music of the 70s. Um, so at the moment, there's no gigging. There's no jamming as such. So, so the question is, do you think in some way that this situation will give birth to a new genre of music? I think, um, I don't know about a genre, but I think, I think authenticity is going to go a long way post this. I know that's quite a broad, a broad thing, but I think we've been quite tied up in, in short term ideas the last few years i think and people who are suddenly big very quickly and um 
people who maybe don't bring so much to the table apart from a bit of notoriety or, you know, a kind of really big moment. And I think, you know, I certainly found myself reaching out for for artists that have really got something to say and who feel like they're coming at it from a place of, of, of love and intelligence and... Um, Compassion. Just author, yeah, just authenticity, really. And it's not about being commercial or not commercial, but I think post this, I don't think my guess would be there's not going to be a lot of room for things that feel, um, you know, really lightweight. It's not that we need everything to be heavy, but I think we're gonna we're gonna look to those artists that really um, that really bring something that feels valuable to the table. And you know, God knows, perhaps we'll get Mr. Blobby too. Will be the biggest <laughs> thing straight out of this, and I've got it completely wrong, but. Um, I think uh, I think there might be a bit of a, 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 sea, a sea change towards towards that. Do you know that's actually probably not a bad call because I think as and when we're released from lockdown, people are going to go a bit nuts, and there's probably going to be a, a dearth of, <laughs> as Ramesh Ranganathan said, the comedian said on Radio One a few weeks ago. There's there's about to be an unprecedented amount of low quality content released online <laughs> and i think i think we'll all be in line for a comedy christmas number one i think um so music tech or other tech what tech really floats your boat what are you using what do you like using yeah i mean i, I um so I've, I've got a usb mic uh by road here plugged into my ipad it's an ipad pro with a usb c port uh, I love actually I love the iPad. I can do so much on it. Um, it's very instant. Um, I don't love having my phone on me all the time. So I try and uh, I love I, I enjoy my phone and I think there's amazing stuff on it. Um, but uh, uh, what I try and use that for is I listen to a lot of audio books. Um, and uh, I tend to use my iPad for kind of messaging and emails and um, I write things down with the pencil as well a lot in, in notes. So I, I really, I find that as a device, it's um, it's something I really, really appreciate mm. more and more just to to jot ideas down. It's kind of this endless kind of thing. And, you know, even some music programs in there I like using as well. Um, but when I come to the studio here, I um, I have, uh, you know, a, a Logic uh, and Pro Tools and stuff, and I use all that. Um but I have, yeah, I have lots of little little bits of gear that I like. That kind, you know, a small USB C keyboard with drum with drum pads on that I, I love from Akai, uh, which I really enjoy. And um, I'm enjoying the mobile idea of doing stuff. So you know, w when I did some filming the other day, I've edited it on the iPad. I've never done that before. I've always yeah. used Final yeah. Cut Pro on my computer, but I thought, you know, how would I do this on the iPad? And I found this program called Luma Fusion and did a bit of editing on that and um you know just did it kind of on the sofa and um, how was it um, because I've, I've tried a video editor on my phone recently just so i can upload pictures of the ducklings growing up in the in the pond across the road but it is a hassle doing it on a a small screen how was it for you yeah on the slightly bigger screen of the ipad it's it's it's, it's great yeah. i mean i you know I, I really thought it was amazing and um again i love the instantaneousness of just you open up the iPad, you do what you want to do with it, and then you kind of you kind of close it up. And yeah. I think sometimes the lap, lap, laptops and bigger computers, it feels like a bigger deal. This can be quick, and then you can kind of get back to looking at the sky, you know, rather than yeah. having a head in the screen all the time. Yeah, I'm yeah. all for I'm all for things that are are not intrusive and just kind of um, that add add to your life rather than kind of try to take it over. I was amazed at what you could do with Logic Pro, and I want. How do you feel about bits of software like that that basically have all the orchestra on there um, and you don't actually need any live musicians to to create this music now? Well, I mean, it, I think it's incredible. Um, I think uh, all these programs, Logic, Ableton, Pro Tools, the, the, all the soft synths, you know, companies like Spitfire, Arturia, um, you know, all these people making these amazing software instruments. I think it is amazing and I... I, I, it's one of the things I feel very grateful for that it exists because it allows me to imagine things as big as I want them. Um, however, you know, get an orchestra into Abbey Road too, Studio Two, and it's not—it's just not the same. You can approach it and you can mm. mock it up, but um, I think there's no, there's there's simply no substitute, and that's not even from a purist point of view. It's just for many, many reasons. Um, yeah. So no, I think it's it's wonderful that it's there, but. Uh, uh, um, 
it is it serves a different type of purpose and you know there are some times where i've used those instruments on the real thing because it just sounded good and it sounded right sometimes it sounded better than the real thing because it just worked um yeah. but you know all, all these things exist to just in, in, inspire us i think and you know, as it happened, Logic had a big update um, yesterday. It has loads of new software added to it, and it was it was like Christmas Day. You know, I turned it on this morning. There's this new drum sampler. There's these new reverb units. It's all on it, and I was I was like, whoa! You know, really things like that uh, keep me excited. <laughs> have you ever met Brian Eno? I haven't, but uh, I'm a I'm a big fan. I have his have his auto I have one of his biographies here, and I, I know his music very well. We yeah. uh, we we filmed for an afternoon with him. We were all really nervous because we'd read that he could be an awkward interviewee, but he he was so lovely because we weren't we weren't interested in asking him about Bowie or anything. We, we were talking about this app that he'd written, which is yeah a generative piece of music. The bloom, that, yeah, yeah um, I love it. It just bloom. basically it just plays nonstop Eno type music, and and he was showing us how. He could get his um, his software to kind of. Uh, I, I mean, obviously he's a genius, so he played us a, a kind of a, a random thing on an electric guitar sounding thing, and then he said, "Right, I've written a thing where twenty five percent of the time it's going to hit the wrong notes, and thirty percent right. of the time it's going to not play a note." And it suddenly sounded so authentic and so like it was a real human playing it and just jamming rather than automated. And I I just thought. You know, there's there's so much that you can do programmatically. You know, yeah. this is not actually someone saying play these notes here. This is saying these are the sort of rules that I want this music to follow. Um, he's a anyway. he's the perfect uh, he's the perfect example of a human being that marries absolutely outrageous amounts of intelligence with childlike uh, <laughs> imagination and simplicity. It just kind of they clash, and he he's. Yeah, he's a he's a huge inspiration. I have his cards somewhere here. The yeah, the cards that you you draw that you know strategy of the day or something, isn't it? Oblique strategies. Strategies, yeah. strategies. Yeah, yeah, oblique yeah. strategies. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's like slow is better, and he was explaining that 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 might not mean play slower. That might mean just do everything, including walk over to the guitar and plug it in slower because something may occur to you. Um, there was. Last night, there was the final of the AI Eurovision Song Contest, which obviously I know you're a big, big fan of. You've got to be. Um, <laughs> so I had, the Eurovision... I, had a, I had a song of mine that was on the Eurovision Song Contest about seven years ago. Germany used one of my songs. I to, did not know that. Artists. Which one was it? It was a, 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 an art, a German artist called Roman Lob, and it was a song called Standing Still. I and did it not did, know that. It did, it did pretty well, actually, although I don't think Graham Norton's ever forgiven me. <laughs> yeah because it's your fault that uk uh, isn't doing any well uh, very well obviously um what the, the the theory behind this ai eurovision song contest is obviously that they've 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 trained ai on lots of past eurovision hits and then different countries did it in different ways and then they entered the the songs that those ai systems kind of came up with although the humans got in and, and tweaked it because i think they were mm. just terrible would you ever consider using that kind of computer assistance so ai that might come up with new ideas if you like at least to, to start yeah to sure, start your, sure. your brain i mean I, I think i think i would because um you know in some ways um yeah i think you know a lot of creativity starts with a stolen idea anyway um you know you think about a song i think oh i'd like to write a song like that and you start writing something that sounds a bit too much like that and then yeah. you know hopefully you move away from it and uh, but it's it's anything that generates a kernel of an idea you know whether it's an oblique strategy card or a computer coming up i mean what if a computer comes up with an amazing chord change you think oh that'd be a brilliant thing to yeah. start with the song i i don't think any of these tools um you know, if you use them in the right way, I don't. I I, I think they can all. Off, you know, I have tons of books of poetry around here. Just, just you know, if I'm feeling just like I haven't got much, you know, if I read some, some poetry or, or you know, some a, a bit of a book or something, and it's a great way to get your kind of brain started. And I think it's no different with, with music. I mean, I think if you're just using that, then things may sound a little bit. Uh, uh, but who knows? Maybe yeah. it's so good that no one will ever know. Um, listen, thanks. Thanks so Thank much you. for your time. 